Hello, it's James from xrobots.co.uk. This is part six of building a real working exosuit arm that's gonna make me really strong like Iron Man. Last time we built one axis of the arm, we've got another three to go. This is of course my elbow axis, which we tested and it's pretty fast and it's pretty strong. So it looks like the mechanics are there. A lot of these things are 3D printed and I've used this clever mechanism. Look back on the previous parts, so I can load balance the load over multiple weaker parts that I can 3D print. So this time we're gonna work on one of the other axes that needs to be built, there's another three. And of course that starts behind my back with this arm on my side. So we're gonna start with that axis that holds the whole arm behind me so that by the time we get to attach this one, everything's in the right place. So we will start at the front and start at the back and do the middle two last. So let's have a look at that scale model again to remind ourselves how it hangs together. So far, of course, we've built this elbow axis and we've still got this axis, this axis, and this axis to go. Now I was gonna put this axis on a slant, which makes rotating easier. I'm not actually sure if it does or it's just my imagination. Um, we're going to be starting with this axis, which brings the whole arm around, because that's the one that will go on a sort of backpack. But um, essentially, I think it's probably fine if it goes this way. Certainly, um, I can still twist the arm. And of course, it will be on a base as well, which I haven't decided exactly what it is yet. I'm not going to take all the load on my back, because of course, I'll be supporting this whole arm. Something is going to happen where it's attached to the ground with something, something mobile. So in any case, we're going to build this axis that allows us to rotate here. And I've got some similar gears and things to the one in the elbow, but let's have a look at those, then let's have a look at the design. Here's the gear I'm gonna be using for that axis. You can see it's a lot smaller than the elbow. The elbow, of course, pretty much lifts a dead lift, whereas rotating around on a vertical axis doesn't have as much load on it. It still needs to work pretty reliably and be pretty tight, but we can get away with a smaller gear. I may well substitute the other gears in the mechanism for this smaller one. We'll see how it goes. Uh, basically, this is just under 200 mil, and this is about 260 or 270 mil. So it's quite a bit smaller, and of course that means we have less chain pulling around it for the same amount of rotation in order to get the, uh, the amount of rotation we need, which I think is probably still about the same, about 90 degrees on that axis. So this gear is gonna be mounted up behind me here with a long vertical axis, which is this axis here for moving the arm like this. It'd be really good if that backpack, as I say, wasn't all on my back and legs, and it was on some sort of rig that would go up and down as I go up and down, mounted to something like legs or some sort of base that's mobile. We'll be coming onto that much later. For now, let's look at this axis. Once that's built, we can then tie up the two in the middle for the other two axis. So we're gonna be taking the same approach that we did last time, which is to use this RC brushless motor, a 3D printed gear train, and then having these blocks and tackles. So we're spreading the load over the pulleys and the gears, and that pulls the chain either side. So basically I've already printed my big pulley here out of Tormann alloy, which is Tormann alloy 910, which is a nylon material. And I've managed to get rid of all of the warpage issues I had by printing this directly onto the glass of the 3D printer bed with a glue stick spread on it to help it stick. And that's come out completely glassy smooth on the bottom with no warping at all, which is one of the issues I had early on because the material can warp. So we're gonna take exactly the same approach. We've got this thing pulling either side, but obviously this thing is gonna be right across my back. So this is gonna cause a bit of a problem because it's massively long and massively heavy, of course. So we probably need to stretch this around a corner somehow to go down the backpack. So this is the basic plan, which is to have this big blue board, which is a board that this thing is mounted on, whatever it's mounted on in the end. We've got our chain uh, sprocket up here with some bearing blocks as before and a massive long piece of studding here, and that's to hold that axis still. So <clears throat> we need to build the next axis on it, which is the one that moves front to back. So that's mounted on this in some means, uh, which of course will rotate around there. Now the load of course is going this way on the axis, so as long as this thing doesn't twist in that axis, it should be perfectly stable to build the next axis on. So I mentioned that we need to bring those pulleys round corners, so hence uh, the chain will go round here, 
and we'll come up around these pulleys that are currently green. Those are probably not to scale and won't look like that. There'll be more Tormon alloy pulleys on some very thick studding with bearings in. Um, obviously there needs to be space for the chain to couple to whatever goes there that's flexible and then the flexible thing, which will probably be more paracord, can come around these pulleys and down. Obviously the chain can't bend in that direction so we need to leave some space here in order for the chain to pull in each direction before it reaches the pulley so this can turn 90 degrees. And I think that's about the right distance. Otherwise, of course, I could put those pulleys much closer if the whole thing was cable driven, for instance. We've got our blocks and tackles. These are the moving pulleys and the others will be fixed at the bottom. And then, of course, we've got plenty of space in the middle here for all of the motors and gearing and so on. So these purple things are steel brackets for building houses. Uh, the yellow stuff is wood and the blue stuff is wood. There may be less of these parts and more sort of uh, sheet material. We'll have to see once I start building it. But this is the basic construction. And it's not quite as big as you'd imagine it to be. It's really only half a metre deep and about 400 mil wide. So just the right size for a backpack. It's pretty much this big. Here are some of my brackets that go top and bottom, which should be pretty strong. Here's my sprocket that goes over here. And obviously we have that block and tackle mechanism pulling up and down here. Compared to me, it looks about the right size. Should be all right. Feels good. I've cut various bits of wood and these are just gluing up at the moment, even though they're glued edge to edge here. Of course, these metal brackets get screwed across that should add loads of strength. So now we can start piecing it together. Here are some more bits of wood. These are my tops and bottoms that the bearings go on. So we need to drill a hole in there for the 20 mil studding to go through and all these pieces here go up the sides. I've painted all my bits of wood silver, so this one goes at the top here, and there'll be a couple of these brackets holding it. This one goes at the bottom, and that's the same. And there's another piece that goes over here. So now we need to drill holes in these pieces so that we can get this ABS printed bearing block with the bearing in for the piece of studding to hold the sprocket and get that aligned so it goes through both in exactly the same place. Well, I've marked my corners by putting this on and poking through them and I've drawn across and marked the middle so now we can drill through both of these and get all the holes in the same place. Right, just screwing these brackets on, I've just put the studding in here and aligned it with this edge here by eye to make sure it's parallel so I can get these both at the right distance so that this thing runs parallel and it's perfectly upright. Well, it appears to be extremely substantial. Obviously, this thing is going to sit down this way with a nut above both of these. We've got the sprocket is going to fit on there. And what I'm really worried about, of course, is twist this way or twist this way. And... Uh, Neither of those seem to be true, so that's good. I could, of course, have another cross brace down here and a triangular piece as well to hold this super rigid. I think it's probably going to be okay, but we can always add those in the future. So now we need to think about that block and tackle assembly and the motor assembly that fits in here, pulling up around to the sprocket. Right, that's all mounted up. I've got lock nuts on both sides of my sprocket so that it runs cleanly on top of that bearing. Here's my gearbox assembly, so this is going to sit uh, vertically as you see it here in the gap that I've left. Uh, my bottom pulleys here for the blocks and tackles pull either side and of course the cord again goes through this pulley, it's exactly the same as the last axis. I've just redesigned these plates slightly so that we've got some holes for studding to go through to space the top and the bottom here is going to be anchored by the same holes that the pulleys are on with metal brackets that fit on the inside here on each side and those are going to be attached to the wood. So let's get this printed and we can see how it hangs together. Right, so I've printed these out. So I've got one just on this side here and you'll notice I've got this L bracket that goes underneath and a bit of 6mm studding stuck in. So basically uh, I need to knock the corner off the wood here so I can get this bracket right back and we can get everything aligned. The plan would be the other one would sit the other side and I need to move this metal bracket over because it's in the way 
and then our pulleys will sit in the gap in the middle and there'll be another L bracket on this side with the three pulleys between the same bit of studding that holds these and holds everything to these metal brackets. That's the basic way it's going to hang together. So we've got the four brackets here. Each one has a bit of studding between them where the actual pulleys go. And then the gearbox is just anchored by the same bit of studding. Here are all my Tallman alloy prints. So they've all come out pretty well. They're all really good prints with really flat bottoms. This is the main gearbox assembly. So we've got some studding spacing it apart here with nuts on and two four mil bits of stainless steel that the main Tormann alloy gears run on. The main output shaft is uh, attached to a bolt in fact, but has a bearing on that it actually runs on on each side, which is embedded into these plates. And my little pulleys also have their own bearings in. So they run down the bottom on two more bits of studding. Right, that's all assembled. Seems pretty good. The motor obviously drives this end and the other end's the pulley. There we go. So all my pulleys fitted top and bottom. This is the next important 3D printed part, which is my pulley block that goes around the corner. That part will eventually be screwed down here so that the cord that's attached to the train can come around here and down. And the middle of this is aligned perfectly with the middle of my block and tackle. And of course, this is aligned this way with the edge of the gear. Here it all is so far. So now we just need to make a motor mount to mount this motor on top of the gearbox and then we can string it all up. So I'm going to design a thing like this, which sits on top and it's uh, going to have the motor in it here, a clamp to hold the motor with a nut and a bolt. And it's also going to be adjustable so that I can adjust the belt tension. So this time I've got a pivot on these holes here. Unfortunately, I left holes in the plates to mount something like this. And the other side, we're going to have this uh, thing here. So we can put a bit of four mil studding through there and have a nut and a bolt and things to do it up. So we can adjust it by pivoting it around this point. So that's going to be two pieces, solvent welded together, printed in ABS. And then we can fit the motor. I've got both of those parts on the bed at once and the printer's about halfway through. I've attached a piece of 4 mil studding here, which is attached with lock nuts. And here's my piece, solvent welded back together with acetone. And my little slot there will fit on there. And this will be pivoted around this place so I can move this up and down to tension the belt. So there's my thing mounted now. I've got a screw in each side and now I can tension that belt and fix it in place. And the motor moves in and out and I can pinch that there with another nut and bolt to hold it. Right, we're just testing out the gearbox. Now I've got the motor mounted with my uh, radio control set up. Obviously last time we did a proper control system and put a PID controller on, but this will do for testing the gearbox. So let's see what happens. <laughs> seems to run pretty well. So there are a couple of things rattling. There's some spaces hidden back in there, which if I run this, you can see rattle around and those are slightly loose on the shafts. If I hold that, it's a bit quieter. So that's all the rattling is. I haven't put any grease in this gearbox yet either. Seems to run pretty well. I've screwed this piece on now. So looking from the top here, we've put the chain on and all I get is this much motion until the chain hits the pulleys. So I pretty much knew that was the case. It's gonna be okay for that axis. Obviously something flexible has to go around the pulley so the chain can't continue. If I'd run steel cable perhaps and wrapped it around a pulley lots of times with an anchor somewhere, then perhaps that would have worked better because we could have got more motion out of this and I still might change that in the future. But for now this'll do because I know it's really tough and I can mount everything on this steel sprocket and on the drive shaft, and that'll make that axis really firm. So I've just tied some paracord onto the chain. It's not really a suitable choice because the chain will eventually cut through the paracord, uh, but for now it'll do to test that this works okay, and obviously we need to attach it with something flexible that goes onto the other half of the block and tackles. Ideally, that would be steel cable with a proper coupling, but if I'm gonna change this for a pulley at some point, there's not too much point in going to the trouble. It runs okay for now, so we'll just see how that works as a proof of concept, and then we'll come back to it when it's loaded up when the other axis are built. So I'm just stringing up my blocks and tackles, and this is the end that's tied off at the moment. But you can see as I put tension on this, this and this bend towards each other quite a lot actually, so I'm gonna to need to put a cross brace in there. Whether it needs one that goes triangular across there as well is another matter, but at the moment obviously these are getting pulled together quite a lot. So we'll have to see. I guess the cross bracing in a triangular fashion across is only a problem if these skew down when I put the weight on this axis. 
but for now we definitely need to stop these getting pulled together. I've installed an additional cross brace with a couple of brackets and now of course those don't get pulled together at all so that's really good so now I can tension this up and we can run it and see if it works. So that seems to work pretty well. Obviously the force around here is quite big. It's a little bit less than the elbow I had, which could do a deadlift of 20 kilograms, probably a lot more since the motor was running nowhere near its full capability. But uh, yeah, pretty happy with the way that's looking at the moment. All seems to run pretty smooth. And of course that is the axis for moving my arm round and round around me. So uh, yeah, there isn't, there isn't that much motion, but there's enough that that will work. And as I say, I can change this chain for a pulley at some point if I want more motion, but I think that's actually going to be fine. So that's definitely going to be capable of moving the load of my arm going around like this. Obviously, we've got the elbow we've already built, and then we've got two other axes we need to build as well. But before I do these, I need to work out how I'm going to mount this, because I can't carry it on my back. This thing itself, already, just on its own, uh, is really a two-hand lift anyway, so I don't want that on my back. The elbow, which is another two-hand lift at the moment, and those other two axes, which are going to make it much heavier as well, although they'll be slightly more simplistic than this, all that weight is going to add up. And then lifting the thing I'm lifting, like 20 kilograms or whatever extended, I'm not going to be able to hold it, so we need to make some sort of brace or some sort of floor-mounted platform, really. Now, there's several options for this. One of the most simplest options, of course, is kind of a wheeled base with four big wheels or, or whatever that are spread around me, and as I walk around, it follows me round, essentially. So it's a bit like a one-armed forklift truck, essentially, where I can, it can follow me round. Maybe it's got two strings in my back and it can work out which way I'm turning, whether I'm pulling forward or back based on those tensions. It follows me round, or there's another joystick perhaps on the other hand, and I can manipulate things and move them round. That could be really useful in a warehouse situation or something like that. The other option, of course, is to build power legs. That's going to be significantly more difficult, um, basically because I still need to balance. And I've got quite a lot of other leg projects going on in my channel. I've already built the working gong droid project, so check that out. And now I'm starting another bipedal android project, which is eventually going to be dressed up as different sci-fi characters. So you need to check that out. That's going to be called Robot X, and the first part is coming out soon. So do people really want to see me build another leg project at the same time? And I guess that's a question you'll have to answer. So I'm going to attempt to put a poll in this video that appears in the cards up on the top right hand side of the frame. If you can't see it there, it probably, I think it only works in the app and it works on desktop. If you can't see it there, you'll have to write in the comments below whether you'd like to see me build something that definitely works on wheels or whether you want to see me spend more time building power legs to go with the power arm. So don't forget to vote in that poll or write something in the comments. And if you'd like to like the video as well, that would be really good. Okay, so that's all for this time. Next time we'll hopefully come back with a decision about what we're going to do about mounting this whole thing. So don't forget to subscribe for more updates on this project and other projects. You should also check out my Spreadshirt store. The links are in the description below where you can get hold of my exclusive t-shirts. I have a limited edition design featuring my Star Wars droids that I've built that's only available to the end of January 2017. Also, you can support me on Patreon at patreon.com xrobots, where you can get access to some exclusive rewards, including all my videos early. All right, that's all for now.